Good morning, everyone. I am Sanggun An. Uh, this morning, we are going to learn about Zakar and Nekeva. In English Bible, Genesis 1, 27, it is written, uh, God created male and female. And chapter 1, Genesis chapter 1, verse 27. Uh, but I'm raising up <clears throat> that this English interpretation, male and female, is not proper. It must be reinterpreted. So the, we are dealing with very much grave issue, Zakhar and Nekeva. I'm not attempting to change the word of the Lord, but uh, I'm considering proper translation, proper interpretation according to Hebrew language. Okay. Uh, Genesis 1.27, it is written, So God created mankind in his own image, in the image of God. Okay, This is very much important repeated phrase. Within one verse, the same phrase is repeated twice. So, so pay attention to the concept of image of God, okay? According to His image, the Creator image that God made man and woman. This is the uh, point. God created Zakar and Nekeva. This is the point. So think about what could be the image. According to ancient Hebrew, a noun Jakar describes his theological role of man, Adam, rather than biological gender, male or female. Okay, uh, there are three reasons of it. Number one, the relationship between noun form of Jakar, meaning male, and the verb form of Jakar, meaning he remembered. He remembered. He referring to God. God remembered. And then this kind of difference are not the relevant each other. English Bible chose the noun male for jakar. Okay, the meaning jakar, the verbal meaning is to remember how. The noun form could be male, uh, I wonder, okay? Number two, the biological meaning of term male and female has nothing to do with the theological concept of God's image, who is the creator. So within this context, Genesis 1.27, the main issue, major theme is uh, God's image, creator God's image. And then God created first man, Adam and Eve. So, uh, proper translation should be made according to context, according to the concept of image of God. Image of God, creator. Number three, Jakar is the divine verb. Okay, this is the true. Jakar is the divine verb, not ordinary the language. Frequently, frequently, Jakar describes God's act of salvation. God's act of salvation for his people. For example, Genesis 8.1, God remembered Noah during the time of great flood, God remember Noah, the God made the water subsided. Okay, Genesis 19, 29, God remembered Abraham's prayer. Okay, God remembered Abraham's prayer because of that, his nephew Lot was rescued. Lot's family was rescued. Okay, uh, Genesis 30, 22, God remembered Rachel's prayer, and then God made the Rachel, barren Rachel, become pregnant. 
Okay? In Exodus 2.24, God remembered his covenant for his people, and God uh, called <clears throat> Moses to be the deliverer. So in this way, the word Jakar, God remembers something very much important. So <clears throat> the meaning of remember is more than uh, the psychological, more than the thinking, more than idea. God performs his great acts of salvation. That's the meaning of God remember. And then uh, the word jakar came from this kind of verb jakar. God remembered. God saves his people. So jakar. And then so the translation male and female, there should be something wrong. Okay, this is my uh, raising up the issue. Okay, I want you to look at this picture once again. Okay, this primitive, the form of knife. Okay, developed form of knife. And then when knife is developed, it becomes axe. It's a very useful tools, a very useful instrument. Okay, this, this kind of instrument uh, seems to have close relationship with the meaning of jakar. Okay, God as the subject of this verb. Hebrew picture letter jakar means, okay, according to picture letter, zayn, kaf, and resh. Okay, zayn. This is the picture of the handy knife, handy knife, if it is, it is developed sword or axe, they are the best tools for human life. Okay, second, cuff, cuff means a uh, picture of palm, human palm. So if it is verbal meaning, you may interpret hold on seize or use or protect that's the way of interpretation and then uh, last consonant resh this is the picture of human head meaning human okay uh, i want you to see the alphabet list alphabet table okay uh, can you find out design within this design? Okay, and the second line, first alphabet, there is a design. Okay, and the cuff, try to find the cuff. Okay, second line, and there's a cuff, palm. Okay, and the resh, okay, lesh, resh, uh, I'm going to show you another one. Okay, let us repeat the alphabet we are reviewing. Alep, Beit, Gimel, Dalet, Hey, Vav, Zain, Chet, Tet, Yod, Kaf, Lamet. Okay, uh, this is the interpretation. First interpretation, number one, God held on Kaf, a tool, knife, for man. Okay, this is the very uh, direct interpretation. Okay. God as subject, he held on. God holds tool for man. Okay? This is the, the way of interpretation. Uh, for man, also in this context, uh, to see, uh, to save covenant partner, to save human being, or to bless human being. Second interpretation, remembering his covenant. The Hebrew meaning of the remember, remembering his covenant, God used. I interpreted the, the picture at the cuff as used because when God holds on, it is for using. So uh, God used the best tool. Okay, so I added the word best tool because in ancient time, even today, 
every devices, every tool or every electronics, they are best one, okay? It depends on the level of civilization. Okay, as you live in the civilized, most civilized the country, then you are going to use the best tool, best smartphone, best television, best TV. Okay, it is to bless his people. It is to save his people. It is for welfare uh, of God's people. Okay, uh, God as the subject, Jakar, the meaning of Jakar could be this, the one who uses the best tool for man. Okay, God as the subject. When God remembered Jakar, okay, God is the one who uses the best tool for man. Now, this is the divine action. And then number two, okay, God created Adam. God created Adam and Eve. Adam, he, uh, the, here, Jakar. In the English Bible, male, it is interpreted male. But uh, I'm suggesting new interpretation. Jakar means the best tool user. The best tool, Zain, Kaf, holding, using, and then man. So this is the interpretation. Uh, as the best tool user. So Jakar means the best tool user or best uh, instrument user as God does. Okay, this is once again Jakar, the best tool user as God does. Creator God endowed Adam the gifts of making and using tools. So only human being can produce various tools, okay? No other animals. God endowed human being the wisdom so that human being, only human being can produce various tools, various instruments. Okay, so uh, Jakar, I'm... I'm proposing the new interpretation. Jakar should be interpreted into the best tool user or tool user as God creator uh, use. Okay, once again, Jakar means the, pe the best tool user as God does. Okay. Okay, how about uh, Nekeva? Nekeva. Uh, had been translated into female, but I don't like this translation, female, no. Nekeva, female also describes the sociological role of woman or theological role of woman, not described, not described biological gender. It has nothing to do with biological gender. When it comes to biological sense of term, appears in Genesis 2.23. Okay, this is the uh, biological concept of the man and woman or the male and female. Genesis 2.23. This is now uh, when God the brought the, uh, the Hawa for the first time, Eve for the first time to Adam, and Adam was amazed. He said, this is now bone of my bones and flesh of my flesh, she shall be called woman, Isha, for she was taken out of man, Ish. This is the term, biological term, uh, describing different gender. Okay, according to ancient Hebrew picture letter, Nekeva, we are learning about Nekeva. Nekeva, okay, the spelling Nun, Kof, Bet, He, Nekeva. Okay, noon, the meaning of noon is, you see, the fast-moving, fast-moving tadpole, okay, or fast-moving fish. And this is picture, noon is describing fast-moving. So, the meaning could be diligent working or skillful working. Oh, this is the interpretation. And then, oh, kof, kof is the picture of sunset. Picture of sunset or sunrise. Uh, picture of sunset or sunrise 
it's a very ideal time, ideal hour for human being to work because it is it's cool. The temperature is cool at the time. And then sunrise time is very cool. Noon time, oh, very hot. Mostly uh, in Middle East, the noon time, they don't work. There's no moving around people. They all stay inside out. They enjoy taking a nap, taking a siesta. Okay. Uh, and then one more thing, this uh, sunset time or sunrise hour, uh, God commanded sacrifice. They commanded sacrifice, daily sacrifice in sunset time and uh, sunrise. Okay, so uh, bath. The next word, bath, uh, house or at home. And then, head, spirit of God, or it has the meaning of the suffix meaning, denoting a feminine Hebrew term, head. Okay, so uh, we must combine the meaning very diligently moving, skillfully working uh, during cool uh, time and then where? In the house. Okay? So, Nekeba should be translated into this. Nekeba means the skillful one. Skillful one. Okay, do you see the photo? Uh, the women uh, are very good at cooking many different kinds of bread. The, the final photo is oven, okay? Uh, so Nekeba means skillful one, okay? Where, why? The noon, fast moving, okay? If you are, whatever you are doing in fast speed, then it means skillful, according to Hebrew uh, language. So uh, fast moving, fast working, means skillful when a sunset hour when the weather is cool okay at home where at home okay the meaning of the meaning of nekeba has nothing to do with biological gender okay this is the uh, new research this is the result of new research according to ancient hebrew this nekeba Picture letter depicts the theological role of woman as the partner of Adam. Okay, uh, God made Adam also very much creative being, so that only human being can produce many useful tools. Okay, and then woman also, woman also, God endowed woman very skillful uh, things in both in cooking. Okay, next one. Okay, do you see the picture first? The woman is very much skillful in knitting, making clothes. Okay, weaving clothes also, second photo. And then uh, doing beads art, beads, okay? There are many beads, colorful beads, gathered together and then arrayed properly. It becomes a beautiful pendant, beautiful necklace. This is the uh, special skill endowed by God for woman. That's the meaning of Nekeva. Okay, according to ancient Hebrew alphabet, Nekeva means skillful one, okay, not female. So we must have the better understanding, relevant the interpretation. Okay, let us review. Uh, Ma'am, okay, water wave, noon, fast moving. And then Samek this is a thorn bush or acacia tree. Ain, noon, and Pe, shape of mouth, and Chade, moving, tracing. Okay, cough, now you see cough here. Resh, human head, okay, shin, and Tav. Okay, uh, so. I'm going to make a summary of this lesson today. Jakar means 
the best tool holder or the best tool user or the best tool producer. That's the meaning of jakar. Okay? Human being jakar created to become a best tool holder or best tool producer. Okay? As God does. As God does. Yeah, God remembers, God jakar. Okay. Whenever God remembers, God also holds the instrument, best instrument. God's instrument, we must add best instrument, best tool to save human being. Okay, Nekeva. Nekeva means the skillful one, okay, the skillful worker at home. Skillful worker at home in the evening or in the cool time or day. Not male and female, okay? There's no concept of male and female according to ancient Hebrew pictography. It is improper translation. No. Okay? These are uh, Hebrew terms uh, describing two genders. Okay? Male and female. Uh, there's a Hebrew term, Ish and Isha. As it is written in Genesis 2.23. Ish and Isha. Okay? Uh, Ish and Isha could be explained according to picture letter. Okay? According to picture letter, Ish means number one. Alep, you see oxide, Alep, the meaning oxide is strong one, okay, strong one, Alep, the first letter, it is also describes the image of God, God is the uh, Alep, so God in Hebrew, God is called Al, Al, Alep, Al, strong, Lamed, strong shepherd or strong leader, this is the uh, divine uh, alphabet. Alep, and then uh, Yod, arm and hand, Yod, arm and hand. The verbal meaning is stretch out towards something to hold, okay? Yod. And then, uh, somewhat interesting. The third shin is a picture of woman breast or mother's breast. It depends on the context. Shin, woman breast, okay? Could it be the pretty female or wife? So meaning of Yish, meaning of Yish, she a male or husband, okay? <clears throat> the, according to the picture, the, the one who stretch out toward the female breast, okay? This is the interpretation, literal interpretation, okay? Uh, so it, it could be interpreted this in this way. Yish is the one who misses female breast, okay? Man, that's a man's general uh, instinct. Okay, how about Isha, woman? The translation woman, interpret, uh, and a woman according to ancient picture that was somewhat funny and then uh, very much interesting. Okay, same, Alep. So a woman also created uh, in strong being, the first being over whole universe, okay? And this, that's why it is used Alep. Alep, uh, strong one, and then Shin, Isha, and then inside the Shin, inside the consonant Shin, there is a dot. It is called Mapik. There is a sign of the doubled, repeated uh, alphabet. Okay, Shin, Shin. Okay, whenever one word is repeated, the meaning of meaning is augmented, increased. The meaning is. Uh, exemplified. So, shin, single word shin means breast, woman breast, but shin, shin, big breast, okay? This is the uh, way of understanding. And the hair. So, according to picture letter, isha means the one who has very big breast, okay? Very big breast. This is the uh, primitive the interpretation of woman, okay? Do you see picture? The Adam and Eve, okay, different. Breast shows different gender. Okay, baby are sucking. And then, you know, big breast, okay? This is the Isha and Ish, okay? This language describes uh, biological gender. Okay? Now, uh, now, we understand, okay? What's the meaning of uh, Chakar and Nekev.
Uh, okay, now this is the end of our class today. So, see you again. God bless you. And see you again later on. Later on. May heaven and peace be on you. Shalom. Shalom.